I'm Mike Logan. I'm all alone, and this better be good. That's right. It's the weekly movie review podcast where I review a movie before seeing it and I review it again after seeing it. And this week, I'm seeing Twisters, the action-packed, adrenaline-fueled sequel to the 1995, 96 film, I think. Let's find out. 95 or 96. I think it was 96. But let's see as I type on my computer. The film Twister came out in 96. I was right. Yeah. Um, so it's based off of the film from 96 starring uh, Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton. Uh, fantastic film, very uh, directed by Jan de Bont, um, back in the days when disaster films were kind of coming out every two months it seemed like and every director got a big budget to just blow a bunch of stuff up and Jan de Bont did a very good job of bringing tornadoes to the screen for the first time in that film. I think the only time you can really ever think about tornadoes being in movies before Twister was like Wizard of Oz. It's like the most, the best example. But that movie came out, we all found out what an F5 tornado was, the finger of God, and uh, Bill Paxton was immortalized in cinema history. <laughs> um, but this next one, this new one, Twisters, which is, by the way, one of the least inventive sequel names I've ever heard of, and there was a Fant 4 stick one time. So <laughs> Twisters is a sequel uh, set, obviously, in modern day, hunted by a devastating encounter with a tornado, Kate Cooper gets lured back to the open plains by her friend, Javi, to test a groundbreaking new tracking system. I'm honestly amazed that they've been able to make two full-length feature films where the plot is, we have to test this meteorology technology. <laughs> like, I don't know how they get us to, like, bite our nails to whether or not this giant trash can is going to let up a bunch of aluminum birds in the sky, which is pretty much the plot of the first Twister, if you haven't seen it. <laughs> but they somehow make you uh, stay entertained with destruction and stories. And the first movie, the story was, you know, Bill Paxton brought his ex-wife, and then him and Helen Hunt rekindled their love. All the while, you don't realize that the ex-wife is in the right the whole film because uh, she kind of gets screwed over. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about this one, this, the sequel, uh, which um, I have a lot of, uh, I love the first movie. I saw it with my family in theaters. We used to go see movies all the time because it was the 90s. And um, my dad was really excited about this one. And I remember every time we watched it, he's always like, freaking out about the cows and like all the information about tornadoes that he pretended he already knew. Um, but this one uh, does seem to be uh, very modern, a lot of action, scenes with the trailer, a lot of young people in it. When you think about like movies from the 90s, it always felt like the actors in the movies were always older. Like they always had like something serious going on. Like, you know, Bill Paxton's going through a divorce in the first one, which is a very early 30s thing to be doing in the 90s. But this one, the cast is a lot younger. Um, Obviously trying to draw in the younger audience who's going to the movies more so than the older audiences are these days. Um, I'm recording this. Uh, today is August 7th. This movie came out about a month ago. Um, it came out in a pretty good time in Hollywood because uh, it needs a boost. Hollywood needed a boost. Thankfully last week Deadpool and Wolverine came out and gave it that boost, a big one. But this movie came out um, just in time, I think, to save some theaters and get some people back into them. What do I think? What do I think is going to happen in this movie? I don't get know. All I know is Glenn Powell is in it, and Hollywood has decided that this is the guy they're going to shove down our throats this year. Uh, if you're a long-time listener of the podcast, you know that Garrett and I used to go in-depth about actors who Hollywood has selected, and they decide that they, they're going to be in all these movies going forward, and they're going to be the next star. Uh, Glenn Powell seems to be that guy. I'm not mad at it. He's a great actor. He's entertaining. He's charismatic. He's got that, you know, that cowboy, bad boy hybrid thing that ladies like. Um, so, I don't know, I'm excited to see what he does in this film. I know I really love Bill Paxton as an actor, so it'll be hard to fill his shoes, but I think it'll do just well. Um, I'm looking forward to the destruction, right? That's the whole point you go to a movie like this, is to see stuff get blowed up or whipped around or thrown in people's faces or cows back and forth. That's what I'm looking forward to. And since the first one came out like, 20, 18 years ago, um, I really, really I'm excited to see where they've come technologically. The director is a guy named Lee Isaac Chung, who I've never actually heard of. Um, quite young, uh, doesn't have a ton of movies under his credit. Um, in fact, this is the first, looks like the first feature length American release he's ever had. So interesting pick um, to go with him, a relative unknown, as opposed to any kind of established star. But the whole film is kind of filled with um, unknowns, except for, like I said, Glenn Powell. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see what this guy does. It looks like most of his other credits are low-budget, very serious character films, which is a good sign, a very good sign, for a movie like this. Because when you really take an auteur, if you want to call him that, an auteur director and put him in the vehicle of a big blockbuster with things blowing up and tornadoes and stuff, you usually come out with either you get, you know, Thor, um, what's the one Taika Waititi directed? Well, I can't remember it. Thor, the... <laughs> 
Not the Dark World, because that one was terrible. Thor, love. No, not Love and Thunder. That was bad, too. Ragnarok. There we go. Well, you take an actor director like Taika Waititi and put him in front of a Marvel film, you get a film like Thor Ragnarok. But you can go the other way, where you put a filmmaker like Ang Lee, who did like Brokeback Mountain um, and Cartridge Tiger, and then you, you give him Hulk, and you get the crappy Edward Norton Hulk movie, where he only fights like twice and then bounces around the Grand Canyon. No, that was Eric Bana. My bad. Eric Bana was in that one, and that one was not a good film. So it could go either way. He could bring a really great gravitas and character development to a really fun popcorn flick, or he could make a confusing, polarizing mess, but I don't think he did because it got pretty good reviews. So I'm not usually, I don't usually review a movie that's been out for this long, so I've had to avoid anything about it to not, you know, everything spoiled. Other than that, I don't really have a whole lot in the beforehand for this film just because, like I said, I don't know much about it. I didn't know much about the original Twister before I saw that, well, you know, forever ago. Um, but like I said, I want I, some people need to die. And I'm saying that because there needs to be stakes involved in this movie. Um, nobody died in the original Twister, which I think is odd because of how much stuff got destroyed. Like there's a scene where a tornado rips through an entire drive through movie theater and nobody dies. So like in this modern era of film, this isn't 1996 anymore, uh, the moviegoer tends to be a little bit more cynical when they're watching, and someone's got to die for us to take it seriously. So right off the bat, just kill a guy. Just kill, get someone sucked up right at the beginning of the movie. Oh, the dad died at the beginning of Twister. I forgot. One character died. He was in the scene for five, in the movie for about five minutes, and that was the motivation for Helen Hunt to, you know, take up storm chasing. So although the synopsis of this movie does say that the main character is haunted by a devastating encounter with a tornado, which means... Her dad's probably gonna die, let's be real. Um, I don't know any film in history where they kill the mom, so it's definitely gonna be the dad. <laughs> oh, Bambi, I guess Bambi, she got it pretty rough. But, bold prediction is that the, this girl's dad's gonna die right at the beginning of the movie. And if, it's, if he dies from getting sucked up by a tornado because he thought he could hold the door shut by hand, he deserves it. Because that's, if you've seen the first one, that's how Helen Hunt's dad goes out. Dude's trying to hold a storm shelter door shut from an F5 tornado with his bare hands. And he gets sucked up. That's what happens when you do that. That's just not smart. Hopefully this guy goes out a little less dumb. I'm also, he might even die. Who knows? Um, well, no, I'm just excited. That's it. I'm excited. I, I, um, I don't have much to say about the movie beforehand because it seems like one of those movies you just kind of go in, it happens to you, and then you react to it afterwards. Oh. So yeah, that's what, that's what I think. Uh, it's weird doing this without a partner. This is the first time I've ever done the podcast by myself, which I don't mind. It's just unusual not bouncing things off of somebody and just listening to yourself talk into a void. I'm staring at an empty uh, booth right now and my iPad and my phone. So I'm ready to go stare at a movie screen for about two hours. So you know the deal. You're going to hear the trailer for the movie. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be back after I've seen the movie and you're going to get a review of this thing and hopefully it doesn't suck. And that, I bet the dad dies. I'm calling it right now. So. Trailer, I'll be back. See you in a bit. Dodge whatever's in there, it's big and it's moving fast. Drive! Go, 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 go. Himself a tornado wrangler. If you feel it, chase it! I said, if you feel it, chase it! Alright, here we go. Oh, she's perfect! She's gorgeous! You thought you could destroy a tornado. We never had a chance. You want one? Face your fears. You ride them. We got twins! Twins! Is 
that it? Nope. You just heard the trailer for Twisters, and I uh, just got done seeing it. Um, so before I get into the spoilerific version of my review, I'll give you the light version that doesn't have anything that gives away any significant plot points, stuff like that. But there's not a bunch of things to be spoiled in this movie, so they won't be that long of a spoiler-free first half. Uh, uh, I thought it was fun for the most part. Um, the action was as good as I thought it was going to be. Uh, better, obviously, than the first Twister. Um, very inventive with the way they decided to destroy stuff. Every time a tornado comes on screen, it's, it's, it's captivating, it's, it's thrilling, it's frightening. Um, they do raise the stakes by actually offing some people in this movie, which I was surprised about, but they did. My prediction was slightly right beforehand, but off, and I'll explain more when I uh, get to the spoiler part. But that was my opinion about it. Severe lack of any kind of character development. Nobody has an arc in this movie. Uh, which I was surprised by, given that we talked about the director, Lee Isaac Chung. Um, all of his films before this were very character-driven, smaller, focused films. And then he's got this big budget uh, action film with really great actors who he doesn't seem to get a ton out of all of them, except for Glenn Powell. Um, Anthony Ramos is in the movie, I think, a little wasted. Uh, and the lead, Daisy Edgar Jones, who plays Kate, uh, I, I just felt her character had no arc. Like an arc for a character usually involves uh, learning a bunch of lessons throughout the film that then uh, educate who you become as a character by the end of the movie. You have some sort of huge thing that happens to you at the beginning, and then you go through a bunch of things where you learn all these lessons and stuff, and you slowly, you know, learn how to be a better person or how to deal with the thing you're going through, the problem you're going through. This movie doesn't, they don't really do that. They really, the character, the arc that happens is one conversation uh, in the middle of the third act, which is pretty lazy writing if you ask me. Like, a character should be able to go through a bunch of stuff throughout the film that influence the way they act toward the end of the film, not just they act like a kind of piece of crap the whole movie, and then one person gives them a speech, and then they're a different character. That's just bad writing. The tornadoes were awesome, <laughs> but the characters I felt were really lacking. Um, Glenn Powell did the best he could. Uh, he had amazing charisma. I think that he, every time he was on camera, it looked fantastic. But again, these characters did nothing as far as grow in the film. Like, Glenn Powell, Tyler the Storm Tracer, starts off as an arrogant YouTube Storm Tracer, and, uh, ends the movie by being an arrogant YouTube storm chaser who was also smart. So, I mean, if that's character development, I guess you got it. Uh, as far as the lead, Kate, um, before I get into my opinions about Kate, I'll, I guess I'll preface with there's going to be some mild spoilers, although there's not a lot to spoil of this movie. So if you do want to uh, be surprised by a movie that came out a month ago, <laughs> turn off right now, come back later. Uh, but for the people who want to stick around about my opinion about this, yeah, stick around. You don't need to be spoiled. Just stick around. I, Kate uh, loses all of her friends at the beginning of the movie. I predicted that there would be a, a tornado killing somebody. I thought it would be her father and not being her best friends. And what that does is it causes her to have PTSD for this entire film. And it really, it's not like the kind of PTSD in a movie that makes you empathetic. It's not the kind of PTSD where, like, you know, she's trying her best to, like, survive in the world and everything's against her or she keeps getting triggered or whatever it is. No, she's just mean to everybody. And I'm supposed to, as a, a viewer make it okay because she lost three of her friends. But then you've got Anthony Ramos, who plays uh, another character in the movie named Javi, who also loses his friends at the beginning of the film. And he apparently deals with it a lot better. Like, I don't know if it's um, her lack of talking to any characters in the film about anything that's happening to her, or the fact that she left her hometown after the disaster happened and never went back, or the fact that she never talked to her mom again. The, the, what happens is uh, you get a character that has purposely not addressed any of the trauma in their life, and I, as a viewer, don't want to root for them. Because to me, she just, she seemed uh, like uncaring uh, and unkind, which is a complete opposite from the way they introduced her at the beginning of the film. And even in flashbacks later in the movie, she's shown to be a very, very happy and dimensional person, but we don't see that person for this entire film until the last, literally the last 10 minutes of the movie, which I think is a waste, because I think that Daisy Edgar Jones did great with what she was given. I just don't think she was given enough to do. Especially when you've got, I mean, Glenn Powell essentially is playing this like very, very easy to like character, even though you're kind of supposed to, I think, hate him at the beginning. But I don't know. To me, that was my biggest complaint. It's all I kept saying the whole film was like she kept saying things or making decisions, and I would, I was luckily alone in the theater, and I don't normally ever talk during a movie, but she visibly made me angry like two different times when she would make a decision that made no sense, or if she just asked a question, it could be clarified, or if she just asked, gave somebody some information, the, you know, 
she would be helped a bit. That was my biggest problem with her as a character. Everybody else in the movie, very forgettable. Like, nobody really has any kind of, like, memorable screen time. I'll give a little special shout-out to Ben, the reporter played by Harry Hayden Patton. Uh, he was pretty entertaining. But everybody else just seemed like cannon fodder. Um, they were just kind of there to fill out the cliché roles from the first film. Um, and that was about it. Which does bring me to... Um, Another observation I think I had about this movie is calling it a sequel, I think, is a bit inaccurate because it is pretty much beat for beat the same film as Twister. It's just, you know, updated with younger cast and better effects, but it is the exact same plot from, you know, losing people close to you at the beginning to a tornado to moving across the country away from the tornado alley to be a meteorologist on television to getting called back in for one last job to being to having the competing rival storm chasers be really celebrity like like every beat in this movie is the exact same as the original, which is not a bad thing. Because the original is a great film. I just thought that it was interesting that I went into it thinking it was going to be a sequel, a continuation of some sort of story. But you get a little nod to the first film with the Dorothy, the trash can I mentioned in the first half, the trash can with the Pepsi can thing. Uh, but you get a nod to that at the beginning of the movie. And the rest of the film, uh, it just kind of pretends like the first movie doesn't exist and it's kind of treading new territory. And I'm not saying it's bad. Again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I was just expecting more of a sequel film than just a straight up reboot. Because it did... As a guy who saw it in theaters when it came out 28 years ago, by the way, not however I said 18. When I saw it in theaters when it came out, um, I remembered what the plot was. So when I saw it today, I just kept thinking, well, this is going to happen next. Now they're going to go back to the mom's house and she's going to cook them all a meal and then she's going to have her change of heart. So it was very um, uh, predictable in the sense that I've seen the first one. So if you've seen the first one, you've seen this one plot wise. Although Bill Paxton and Helena did a lot better, I think, with what they were given. Also, you had. Philip Seymour Hoffman is in a supporting role in that movie. Just a stoner, storm chaser guy. Academy Award winner Philip Seymour Hoffman is in the first film, just taking up screen time. So that's the bar they had to live up to, which I don't know if they really eclipsed it. But let's talk about good stuff. Let's talk about good stuff. We're not all negative. We're never negative on this podcast. The good stuff is this was a beautifully shot film. The cinematography really pays respect to the idea of tornadoes. Like When you don't have a bunch of movies to draw from, uh, aside from the Sharknado franchise, we don't have a bunch of movies to draw from when it comes to tornado disaster films. You can kind of do whatever you want in the cinematography department, and they did. I mean, they took a lot of really high, really wide, really beautiful, long shots. I'm talking. They took their time in the destruction that they showed. It wasn't a bunch of quick cuts in some of the storms. I think the storm that stuck out to me the most um, is there's a big storm next to like an oil refinery where the tornado hits the refinery and then it catches on fire. And it's, there's a scene where when it actually goes through the refinery, it's about 25 second one shot, it's just static of them watching it. So it's not like a follow shot. It's not a one or it's just a one shot one camera pointed in the direction of the storm. And then you watch the storm. So then you watch the storm, um, go through this refinery and it's in one static shot and I really appreciate that because it really lets you get to watch the uh, the damage that it can do. Another great thing, they really explained a lot about the meteorology behind tornadoes in this movie. I think in the first one, if I can remember it uh, enough, uh, they definitely talk about it but not as in-depth and descriptive as they do in this one. I mean, I think the closest you get is when they try to describe an F5 to Bill Paxton's wife and the way they describe it is finger of God, which isn't a way to describe something but in this movie they get very technical with it and they tell you you know what causes this and updrafts and downdrafts and it's a little too jargony for me i'm not a meteorologist but i like that i really like that they did seem to pay respect to the art if you will of storm chasing um i mean other than that i don't have this movie it's not it's not a forgettable film by any means it was fantastic it was entertaining to watch but it's one of those things where if it comes on tv i'm probably never going to watch it if I see a cool scene of it, I might stop. But other than that, I've seen it. I mean, what else do we need? You know what I mean? It's just a, it's a good it's a good movie to watch at home, unless you've got the money to spend. Then I do recommend seeing the theater just for the sound design alone, because I mean you really feel the visceralness of these tornadoes tearing through buildings and people die. Like a lot of people get sucked the fuck up in this movie, which is something that I really did. I hoped that they would do because it did leave an air of terror to the tornadoes as opposed to just, you know, picking up cows and tractor supplies and stuff like that and throwing houses around. People were getting sucked up during this. Even one guy uh, who kind of deserved it. Um, uh, if you've seen the movie, you know, there's a guy treating a hotel employee really rudely before a tornado comes into that hotel and then sucks him the fuck up, which I was pretty happy about. But <laughs> other than that, I mean, I'm just, yeah, 
it was Twisters, you know? It was exactly what I expected. Um, the action was fantastic. The characters needed more development. Glenn Powell, I think, is going to be a star. Um, anytime, for the years I've been doing this podcast, uh, which has been a while, um, uh, we've always had a tendency to say, oh, well, Hollywood's picking this person, they're picking this person, and I'm never a fan of the person they pick. It's always, like, you know, Joel Edgerton or something like that. But Glenn Powell, I think, is a fantastic choice to be the guy, if he is the guy. I thought he was very charismatic. He was very easy to sympathize with, and you wanted to root for him. Um, I mean, if Kate, the character, would have asked him any questions about himself, uh, she would have known he was a cool guy, but she didn't. She was all of her own asshole movie. So, yeah. That's my opinion. How about what do I rate this movie? That's what we want to know. What do I rate? What's the rating I give this? What's the rating? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm going to give this movie, the rating system is out of five as usual. I'm going to give it two and a half. Now, that's not a bad two and a half, but I will say the two comes from all of the action and the half comes just from Glenn Powell. <laughs> the rest of the movie, meh. So I give it two and a half Dodge Rams drilled into the ground out of five. That's right. That's a really specific scale but if you see the movie you understand that it's real so yeah that is a uh, that is this week's episode of this better be good next week we'll have a brand new episode what is um uh what will i have a guest next week is probably the question that people want to know um maybe uh i will i've not picked what i'm seeing yet uh because there are a lot of good things coming up but let me take a look right now and see huh well, let's go let's go we're scrolling, we're scrolling. What month is this anyway? We are in the first week of August. So we've got this weekend, we've got Borderlands. And that's it. Oof, I'm not gonna like that. I can already tell you, as a guy who's played all the three of the video games and has seen the trailers for the movie, I'm predicting right now, I'm gonna absolutely hate Borderlands. But that's the movie we're doing next week. So tune in next week, uh, listen to me wherever, you know, you listen to stuff, you know the deal. Uh, share it, uh, like it. Give me a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever crap people beg for. I don't know. I don't really care. I just like doing the podcast because I like it. If you guys like reviewing it, leave the reviews. Um, so next week, Borderlands. Maybe I'll have a guest. Maybe I won't. Who knows? Thank you for listening. My name is Mike Logan, and that was decent. <laughs>